I love calligraphy. It's the first way I ever made money with my hands. Built into the study of calligraphy is the study of history and art. And they told me that what I had was really a good fit with the curriculum of fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. So I took my skills and expanded them out and created what we have now, which is a week's worth of activities that adds up with kids holding a book that they made full of letters that they made with a feather pen or a reed pen. My name is Scott Cleland, and I'm the luckiest guy because everything I love can help spread the power of reading and writing. The kids have the most important job to bring back inventions from other caves. And one day, they came back into the cave with this. They said, attention, attention, there is a new invention, the brick. They made cities out of dried clay of buildings they could live in. Let's visit them. Come with me, my friends, to the very first big city, the city of Ur in Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia means the land between the Tigris and Euphrates River. Hey, you know this word. Oh. And you know this word. Camel. And you know this word. Oh. Yeah. My job is to write on clay. We roll it across the clay. So here's the pointy nose of the bull. Flat top to his head. A millennium has passed. And you are in the land of the pharaohs. People say, oh, he's a scribe. He can read and write. And uh, my job is to make papyrus writing surface and make pens and paintbrushes from the things that grow along the Nile. And people ask me about papyrus. They say, what is papyrus? And I say, it is a plant that grows along the Nile. There it is there. We cut it down. We carry it back to our workplace and we peel off the outer rind. The inside is a pulp. We cut that into thin slices and we lay two layers down on a piece of wet cloth. One goes this way, the other goes that way. And then we put a piece of wet cloth on top of it and we pound the wet cloth to fuse the papyrus fibers. And it will be the perfect writing surface. Ta! Or maybe, mmm. See, each one of these pictures is a sound. It's not like the old way, where each picture was a whole word. But that's a whole word. It means throne. And that's a whole word. It means lord. But this is ta. And this is er. And this is a. And this is n. Abacada ipaga. Ha I Jakalamana Opa. Yeah. You just move them around. You guys are gonna count along. And we're going to go into the future to what you call the year one thousand before the common era and see what happened with that great idea of sound pictures when it got into the hands of the Phoenicians. Welcome to where I live and work. Yeah, my little office with my library and my desk. It's called the Aleph Beth, the Ox House. Hey, and look what I write on. Two wax tablets held together with a piece of leather and nails, bang, 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 kind of like a box of ideas. <laughs> Here's ah to the Egyptians. Here's ah to us, an ox head, Aleph. Here's ba, a picture of a foot to the Egyptians. Here's ba to us, a floor plan of a house. And you're in a Greek city on a bright, shiny day. Hi. First of all, you take your paintbrush and make the letters on the stone. Now the purple people said, that should be ah, Aleph the ox. And we said, 
Okay, but we don't really need the horns, do we? We can still see an ox head. We don't need that top ear. Can't we still see the ox head in that shape? Alpha. If you know your alphabet, you know your alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, eta, theta, iota, kappa, lambda, mu, nu, psi, omicron, pi, rho, sigma, tau, upsilon, phi, chi, psi, and omega, your alpha to your omega. And that way I can make beautiful letters that have a thin leg and a foot and a thick leg and a foot. What letter is that? A. You know your Latin letters. You know your Romans. 500 years have passed away and you are in a very quiet place today. Look at how nice and beautifully round our letters are. We think that the E should be round, not square. To us, the letter D should be as round as a pearl. It's the south of France. And look at how packed our letters are. We make them with straight lines. If I stop here, I've got an O. That would be an O. But if I had a diamond, makes it an A. And the second letter in our alphabet, maybe you recognize it, what letter is that? E. Yeah, and that camel hump turned into? E. Look what happened to the O with the hairdo. What letter is that? E. Yeah, D. And my favorite letter? E. And they're packed so tight, there's room for one more. I do feel good that um, I'm experien they're experiencing something, something that they'll never get another chance to do, but that they will see in their books the whole time. You'll always see this Egyptian guy, and you'll have had one in your hand. And you'll always see these fired clay tablets in the museum or whatever, and you'll have had one in your hand that you know firsthand, firsthand, <laughs> firsthand <laughs> how to make them. So yeah, it's a joy. Oh, and the kids, I can tell they're interested the teachers come up later and go like this. <laughs> and I know that I'm hitting a home run. And I know that I'm giving them something that nobody else can. So it's very rewarding. The Alphabet Adventure is now available on DVD. Visit our website at www.alphabetadv.com to order your copy today.